Hello, everyone. My name is Tamara Barsley from Takiba Academy. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. I do intend to add more PEP content in addition to my reading content that I have on this channel. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Mathematics Performance Task Paper for 2024. This review session is for those who might have already sat the exam but just want to check if their answers were correct. And for those who will in the future be sitting this exam who want to perhaps see what the questions are like and how to go about answering. So for that purpose, I'm not I might not necessarily just skim through the answers, right? So I, as I said, it might be like a teaching aid for some other groups who will be sitting this exam sometime in the future. All right, so let's go through as quickly as possible. The exam lasts for one hour and 30 minutes and you have to ensure that you read all the instructions. So I'll just really quickly read the instructions. All right, so the task has three parts, part one, two, and three, okay? Part one has questions one, two A, two B, and two C. Part two has questions three A and three B. And part three has questions four, five A, and five B. Of course, you're expected to read the information in each part carefully and use the information provided to answer all questions in each part. So guys, you have to answer all questions. All right, so here's the first part of the paper and let's read the information here. So Easter concert. Ivory Primary School hosts many events on their play field. These events include sports days, concerts and football games. The school wants to host an Easter concert. They hope to raise enough money to paint the school building. The principal has invited you to be the student representative on a planning committee for the upcoming Easter concert. The committee will seek to determine the most preferred seating section of the playfield, two, the ticket price for each seating section, and three, the, num the amount of money to be made. Okay, so I guess this has to do with each part that will be um, looking at. All right, so part one has to do with the most preferred seating section. All right, so there's a diagram that shows the area of the play field that will be used to host the event. It shows the different seating sections and their features, all right? So that's what the diagram is. It's labeled the play field showing the stage and the features of the different seating section. Of course, you have to look at this information carefully so that you, you ensure that you do not miss any of the important details, okay? So, all right, so we see that it's arranged, right? We have a section R, section S, section T, and section U. So there are four different sections. And of course, each section gives you some characteristics there. Um, section R, good view and good sound. Seat in section U says covered, good view and good sound. Seat in section S says, good view and good zone and seat in section T, it's covered. All right, so here's question one. Question one says, table one below shows the four seating sections of the playing field and their features. For each seating section shown indicates by shading whether each has good view, good sound, and or is covered. Okay, so again, there were four sections. Let me just kind of zoom this a bit so that we can see all of the information on the one page of course guys those who would have this exam to do would have been able to see it in full detail and if you are watching this video sometimes it's best to play it maybe on a tv screen right a, a, a phone screen it might sometimes be too small since we're trying to make sure that all the details are visible so if you can use a computer screen or maybe your tv screen to view these videos, then that helps with the visibility, okay? Making sure it's legible that you can read everything correctly. All right, so what we're going to be doing is that you're going to be shading, showing 
um, the characteristics or the features of each section. So section R, good view and good sound. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be, let me just set this up, um, do it a little bit of a thicker base to do the shading. All right, so section R, we say good view and good sound, okay? Section S, good view. So pretty much section S and section R, they are pretty much very similar. They have similar characteristics, similar features. All right, section T says covered. Okay, that's the only thing mentioned there. And then section U has all the features. So it's covered. It has a good view and good sound. So pretty much you're at the big right smack in the set at the front. So you're covered, you can see well, and you can hear well what's happening. All right, so let's get to if there is anything else on this page that we need to do. All right, so that was question one. Simple, straightforward. If you're able to read, then you should have been able to answer this question correctly. All right, question two now. There was a survey done with 30 students. They were asked which section of the play field they prefer to sit during events hosted by the school. Their responses are given in table two below. Okay. So section R has been shaded for you. So luckily, the examiners decided that they would help you guys along by giving you some, some clues as to what to do, right? So if you follow what they have done, that makes it easier for you to complete the entire paper, okay? So um, they have done section R. So remember, the, there were 30 students in the survey. And they were all asked, so there are 30 students listed here. They were all asked which section they prefer to sit. And of course, there was um, the students indicated their preferences. All right, so for section R, we see that there were three girls. And we're just gonna make a note on the screen as we go along. Cancel that. So we're gonna, make some note on the screen as we go along okay i think i did this very thick so i'm gonna not be so thick no all right so there were three girls so we can write the number three here so that we can keep track of what's going on all right and then there were four boys okay so we already have the numbers there for that, let me just make this a little bit thicker. Okay. All right, so let's look at section S now. So what we're going to do is just to identify section S. So that's one, two, three. So again, three girls for section S, and then we have one, two, three. So three boys for section S as well. So let's get to section T. We have one, two, three, four, five. So five girls for section T. Scroll up so we can see the rest of it. And then there were two boys for section T, okay? I'm just trying to make a different notation so you can see. All right, so then we have for section U, okay? And that's all that is left, so I'm just gonna make a big U right here. So highlight all the numbers, okay? So how many lines? One, two, three, four. There were four, girls and then let me see for boys one two three four five six okay so that's for the boys all right for you so here we have them listed um based on the sections the number of students the number of girls the number of boys that indicated their preferences 
All right, let's scroll up to see what we're going to be doing with that information. So they said, use the information in table two to complete the tally chart given in table three. Okay, section has been completed. So again, you guys have an example to work with. They have done um, R. So what you need to do is just fill in for S, T, and U. And of course, they have the totals there. So that's going to help to have you check also if your answers were correct because they have the totals there. So your numbers should add up to what that total is in that corner. So they said they have already done R. You don't need to worry about R. So we're going to do section S which is three boys, three girls. We have already identified that. So, you know, with a tally, you have to draw the strokes. One, two, three girls for S, and one, two, three. So that gives us a total of six that they have there. Let's go back to section T. We had five girls and two boys, okay? So again, we're gonna do the same thing. Make sure we put in the correct number of strokes. And of course, we have the total there that helps us, right? So five girls, right? And two boys, so five plus two, that's seven. All right, so let's get to you. You now has four girls and six boys, okay? And again, four plus six, that's 10. So that shows us that our calculation was correct. So one, two, three, four, and then six boys, one, two, three, and four. five and six, okay? So that gives us a total of 10. All right, so let's hear what we have to do for part 2B. Use information in table three to help you complete the bar graph below. Section R has already been completed. So pretty much, I do, you know, they are showing you what to do. So all you have to do is just follow the steps, use it as the example to complete. So pretty much, very straightforward so far, you have a guide that you can use to help you. So we see how many boys and girls. So we're gonna be using the information there to put in here as well. And I'm gonna to try to make sure I do this the best way possible. And let me make the lines very thick. And then, so for section S, there were three girls. Okay, so this section is a section for girls. All right, this is the girl section. And then there were three boys. Means another color for the boys. Okay, so the boys still in line. All right, same number of girls, same number of boys. All right, so you would have done that. All right, and then you're gonna do the same thing for section T. Since I already have the green, I'm gonna do the boys first. There were two boys for T. So we just count the number of units there, two. Okay, and then there were how many girls? Five girls. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the blue and do five. So we count where five starts. This is where the girl section would be. All right. And then finally, you. So you has four girls. So we count the numbers for four. All right. We identify where four stops. As I said, we're just following what they did in the example. So you just need to do the same thing. And then for the boys, there were six boys. So we're going all the way to the top here. Okay. You know, it's a freehand here, so it's not looking very good, but I hope you get the understanding of what you're expected to do. 
All right, so there you have it. All right, so that's the bar graph there completed. Then 2C. All right, so it says, which section of the play field would you say was most preferred by students? You're going to use the information given in table three to answer questions. So they tell you where to go to look, which is good. They tell you exactly where to go to find the information to answer the question. So we're going to go back to the table three to find where we need to get um, the information. So we're looking for um, which section of the play field, right, was most preferred by students. They said table three. Here's table three, okay? Table three at the top here. So we see that there were seven students total who preferred R, six for S, seven for T, and 10 for U. So we can go back down and answer that question. It says put a tick beside your selection. So section U, section U was most preferred by the students, 10 students all together. All right, so let's go to the next question. Not bad so far. If you guys are reading correctly and doing what you should, then this paper seems to be going very well so far. All right, so the new ticket pricing now, this is part two. When the school, let me make it a little bit bigger, even though, like I said, you guys can perhaps view it on a bigger screen so you can see what's going on. All right, so when the school holds past events, tickets were sold for $500 each and the students were allowed to sit wherever they liked. The planning committee wants to maximize the total amount of money they can earn. For the Easter concert, they want to, one, increase the cost of tickets for all four seating sections, and they also want to increase the ticket prices based on the features for each seating section, okay? So they're, they're going to increase all, all the tickets, right? For all the sections, but they want to increase it based on the features, okay? So let's look at what they're saying. So table four now, they're talking about the percentage. Um, that's This is what they plan, the planned increase, okay? So for section R, they want to increase it by 20%, section S by 20%, section T by 10%, and section U by 50%. And of course, based on the survey that they did, that was the importance of doing the survey, they saw what the students preferred and based on the features that are identified, then you can you know, decide based on the features, especially um, what the pricing or the suggested pricing should be, okay? So question three says you're going to use the information given in table four and you're going to calculate the amount by which the ticket price will be increased for each section. Remember, the original price for a ticket was $500. So you're going to show your work in this space. So I'm assuming they're going to have four spaces, yes? One for section R, section S, section T, and section U. So what I'm going to do is so that we don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, I'm going to put in the percentage increase for each section. And since everything else will be on the page below, you would not have to go back to this page for this section. So, um, Section R and Section S will be increased by 20%. So I'm just putting it at the top. This one will also be 20%. And as I said, I'm just putting it at the top so you can see. Um, section T by 10%. And section U by 50%. Okay, so let's go and see what else we need to do before we start answering the question. It says you're going to calculate the amount by which the ticket price will be increased. So you're going to calculate the amount by which the ticket price. So how much by how much will it be increased? Okay, that's what we're trying to answer. All right, so 
um, since it's going to be increased by 20%, we have to find 20% of the original amount, which in this case was $500. So 20% of 500 would be 20, right? That's how we find percentage times 500, okay? That's 20 off, okay? 100, we're going to be doing some reduction here. Um, 100 to 100 goes 1. That goes 5 times, 20 times 5. The amount this one would increase by is $100. And of course, we said both sections are the same, so we're going to find 20% again of 500 so that's just clear for you guys all right we're going to cancel again 100 into 100 goes one time 100 into 500 goes five times so 20 times five all right so this section was also will be increased by 100 let's look at the other two so we now need to find 10 percent 10%, so that's 10 over 100 times 500. And again, we cancel, this is five. So this one will be increased by just $50. Okay, of course, this was the one that did not have many features, all right? And this one had all the features. So it's been increased by 50%. So 50% of 500. Okay, again, we do the same thing. Five times that equals 250. So this one will be increased by $250. All right, so there we have it. Let me just zoom down a bit so you can look at all four. All right, so each section, right, they had a particular percentage, 20% for S, 20% for R, T was by 10% and U was 50% and we found the amount by which it would increase. All right, let's move on. Now, section 3B says, based on your answer in question 3A, what are the new ticket prices for each section? You're going to write the new price, okay? They said the new price, but I'm gonna add both here and then, right? So I'm sure if you just put the price, it should still be correct, but I'm going to add the new price. And remember, guys, it would be based on these, 100, 150, and 250, those were the increases. So I'm gonna be adding 100, it would be the original of 500, plus 100, and that gives you, oops. Six hundred, okay. And for section S is the same thing, 500 plus 100, and that's also 600. Okay, and then for section T, it was $500 plus $50. And that equals $550. And then for section U, it was $500 plus $250. 50% and that gives you a total of 750. Remember you have to pay attention to the instructions. It says write the new price. Okay, so it's the um the previous price plus the origin. Because I'm showing you what's going on here, you know, I'm having everything in the box right now. All right, so let's go to the next section. It says part three. The number of seats in each section of the play field is as follows, okay? So they tell us now that section R has 100 seats, section S has 100 seats, section T has 120 seats, and section U has 80 seats. Question four says, based on the new ticket prices from question 3B, how much money will the 
planning committee collect if all the tickets for the Easter concert are sold? Show your working in the space provided below. All right, so I'm going to try to do everything on the same sheet. So these are the sections. So R, I'm going to do it across this way. More work in your show, guys, the better for you, because sometimes you might make mistakes with your calculation, but if they see what you were trying to do, you will still score marks, okay? So R, okay, would be 600 times 100 seats, all right? 600 for each ticket times 100 seats. And of course, that's 60,000. If you know how to multiply by multiples of 10, you simply add the number of zeros to the original number, or if you have to work it out, then you do what you have to do to get your answer, okay? Um, S, the same thing. So again, 600 times 100 seats. Okay, that's a total of 60,000 as well. Then section T, okay? Again, the price is 550 times, that's the cost of the ticket, times 120 seats. And then, of course, if you have to do your calculations there, 550 times 120, the answer is 66,000, okay? Of course, like I said, you have to do your calculations. You do your calculations to make sure that the answer is correct. And then, of course, the section U, the cost for each ticket is $750, okay, times 80, because there are 80 seats in that section. And the total for that is another 60. Again, guys, in the interest of time, I'm not doing the calculation, but of course, for your benefit and to make sure that you are doing what you need to, you would do all the calculations. So now you will add up all the sections together to see what the total amount is if all the seats were sold. Okay. And we end up with a grand total of $246,000, okay? Now let's go to question five, all right? And I think this is a final question on the paper. So based on how quickly I completed this, even though I didn't do all the calculations, you have one hour and 30 minutes. So that's enough time to actually get it done and get it done right. Um, the planning committee realized that even with the increase in ticket prices, they would still not make enough money to paint the school. The overall cost for the paint is $250,000. The committee wants to do a further increase to one of the seating sections. The following recommendations were made. Increase the price for the smallest seating section or increase the price of the largest seating section. Now, which recommendation should the committee choose? You're going to put a tick beside your, sel your selection. Do you agree with them increasing the price for the smallest seating section? And do you, or do you agree with them increasing the price for the largest seating section, okay? So remember the largest seating section was the one that just had covering, right? They had 120 seats. It was, had the cheapest tickets because of course it only had cover, but it didn't have a good view and it didn't have good um, sound, all right? The smallest section had all three. It had good view, good sound, and it was covered. All right, so part B, let's look at part B and then we're going to see how to go about. So in part two, you're gonna give one reason to support the recommendation you made in the space provided below, okay? Be sure to use the information provided throughout the task to support your answer. So it's not just whatever you think, they want you to look back at the information presented to make your choice, okay? Personally, I think because it's a school, <clears throat> I would think that they just want to make sure that they make enough money for the concert. They're not thinking about extras or profit or all of that. How much do we need if we're gonna be covering our bases 
how much would we need to ensure that we cover the $250,000, okay? But let's look at the options though, and we have to think about this now, right? The smallest seating section, that's the one where most of the students, if you went back to the survey, most of the students preferred that section, actually one third. So it was 10 students who, 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 who preferred the section U, that's one third of the students, most of the students. So I think that even the fact that most people prefer that section, even though it has the smallest, that means that there will be a demand. More people would most likely buy that section because more, most people liked it and the fact that it has all the features, okay? So even though, yes, we have to increase the price, you're getting good value for your money. So I would think that they would prefer to have the price of the smallest. That's what I would do, because remember, you're, 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 you're the student representative on the committee, so you have to make that decision. And they say make the decision based on information provided throughout the task. So I'm going to select to increase the price for the smaller seating section, okay? And I did some calculation before, because like I said, in interest of time, I'm trying to make sure that we, you know, I finish this paper in a timely manner. So um, based on my calculations, if they increased, right, the percentage by which they took from 50 to, to 60%, then they would have made enough money to cover, they would have made $64,000, which would have been enough to cover the cost of the spit the thing that they wanted um so my reason and as i said I, I i chose to increase the price of the smallest seating section and one reason to support that is because i could say one most students prefer that section so they'll be willing to pay or two because of the features more people would be willing to pay the additional increase for that so let me see if i can write that in quickly all right, so that would be my selection. And then I'm going to also discuss the other side, the flip side, to see if there's anything from the passage that we could use to um to go with the, the other selection, okay? So my one reason, and they said to use information provided, okay? So my one reason would be that the, oops. Write it in. They, and I'm writing with my finger, guys. It's gonna be a little bit the small list section has better, or I should say, the best feature, the better features. Okay, so more people would, that's said I'm writing with my finger. <laughs> I'm writing it with my finger, would. prefer what's going on with my thing today would prefer these seats okay so you, of course, would have to write it in your own way, your own sentence, all right? So the smallest section has better features, so more people would prefer these seats. And that's my take on that. Of course, let's look at the flip side, right? 
So if we said that we would increase the price for the larger seating section, what would be the, why do you think that would be a good idea? That's what the question, can you find something from the passage that would agree with that? Of course, if you increase the price, you would still have to make sure that the price is attractive enough, right? To ensure that people, even though they don't have a good view and they don't have good sound, then, you know, the fact that it's cheaper, maybe that's the thing, since we're only going to increase it. At first, they increased it by 10%. They added $50. We can't, if, if we're going to sell it for the same cost out of the, the other sections, I'm assuming that if the others are sold out, then yes, they would purchase, okay? But this is like so much for you guys to be thinking about in an exam like this, you know, all of that information, you know, that's the sections will have to be sold out. And if they really wanted to come to the Easter concert, then they'll take whatever seats are there. So of course, that means that they would have taken what's left, even if the price was just the same as the others, okay? So... As I said, based on information presented, then the most likely solution would have been to increase. In my view, the smaller section, it has better features, so people would be willing to pay. When, as I said, if I, when I increase it by um, another 10% to make it 60%, right? It was just an additional five, sorry, $50 that was added. So instead of charging 750 you charge 800 then you would have gotten enough money and as i said because that section has the most features right then more people more people and since most people prefer that section then it, it it would stand to reason that they would prefer to have that section but of course like i said on the flip side if you're able to find information from the passage to, to support your answer for having the larger section then you can go ahead and make that recommendation, okay? So I think this brings us to the end of the paper. Um, please make sure that if you have not yet liked this um, video or subscribed to my channel, you do so. I plan to have more content available for PEP students in the future. So to see you around, all right? Take care until then.